Yesterday, Wednesday, March 7th, 2012, Tim Cook, Phil Schiller, Eddie Q, all the good guys from Apple today uh, took the stage in San Francisco, California to talk about the iPad 3. And this is something that uh, has been a buzz all over the internet for the past several months, uh, even right after the iPad 2 came out just about a year ago, 11 and a half months or so to be more specific. Uh, actually, it was about a year ago, right before spring break 2011. We saw the iPad 2. It had a thinner case. They gave it cameras, um, a dual-core Apple A5 processor over the uh, outgoing A4 that was found in the iPhone 4 as well as the iPad 1. This year, they've done it again, and uh, this is definitely the biggest upgrade to the iPad since we originally saw the iPad April of 2010. Uh, so I'm just going to make this quick video. We're going to go over some of the things that... Um, that they're putting in the device and availability. And I know, I know that the subject has been completely killed online. So I'm not going to go and act like this is the first time you've seen the resolutionary, as they're calling it, new iPad. The biggest thing that they've done is the retina display. It is twice the resolution, which uh, in turn adds about four times the number of pixels, twice the width and twice the length. Um, in terms of the device and resolution. It is now a retina display. It's about 264 pixels per inch. It's very high resolution. Of course, I haven't seen one yet, but if it's anything like the iPhone 4 and the iPhone 4S, which it is, it's only about um, 70 or 80 DPI less. The iPhone 4 and 4S, 326 pixels per inch. This is 264. Held 15 inches from the face. The eye cannot distinguish um, between the individual pixels on the display. So it's going to be very high quality. Text is going to look great. Images, anything on the screen that has been optimized for the retina display is, is going to look incredible. So that's going to be the biggest thing. It's actually a higher than 1080p resolution. So it's 2048 by 1536. That's an incredible resolution on a screen that small. Picture your 60-inch TV. Most likely it's 1080p, which is 1920 by 1080. So this is maybe 20 or 30% more than that, which is really just insane. So we'll take a look at some of the tech specs here. They updated the cameras, thank God. The one in the back was awful. I think it was only about 1.3 megapixels. It was very low quality. Now we're looking at a 5 megapixel sensor, to my disappointment, honestly. I, I hope to see that this... I hope to see the same camera in the iPad 3, or the new iPad as they're calling it, that we see in the iPhone 4S, which is very high quality. It's 8 megapixels. It delivers beautiful images. But it looks like we have been downgraded to a 5 megapixel sensor. However, through my understanding, we have, if I can find anything about the camera here, um, we have the same image technology that the iPhone 4S has. The five lenses, a little bit of software algorithms to pull some colors out a little bit better. Uh, as well as the stabilization. So it should be a really, really nice camera. Maybe not quite iPhone 4S good, but definitely better than the garbage that Apple put in there before. The camera on the front is now called the FaceTime camera. Really, it's going to be used for FaceTime. The one in the back, they're now calling it the EyeSight camera. Um, that's across the whole board. They're calling, that on, calling it the EyeSight on the 4S as well. Uh, as you can see over here, we also got 4G LTE networking, which I know a lot of people wanted uh, for whatever reason. I guess it is a lot faster than 3G HSP or HSPA+. Um, and in my area, I'm just south of Cleveland, Ohio, we have a very, very good 3G signal here. I don't know if we have 4G LTE, and I won't be finding out considering that I did not pre-order last night the 4G LTE model as I have an iPhone with um, the personal hotspot feature and I don't need it. Uh, but they did add that feature as well. The processor has changed. It's now an A5X. I'm guessing it's still the same CPU, which is the 1 gigahertz dual core. However, we now have quad core graphics, which Apple is claiming to be four times the speed of the Tegra 3 chip set found in most Android devices. Uh, so that should be really nice for graphics capability, graphics power, and to power that ultra high resolution display. They also did some changes over here with... Um, I think that Bluetooth 4.0 is new. I don't know if it had that before. So we've got that, of course, 802.11, A, B, G, and N. Uh, the battery life is still the same at a 10-hour 10, 10 expectancy, and I think they did say 8 hours if you're using uh, 4G LTE. So that's really nice. The case is actually, I want to say, about 0.9 millimeters thicker to, a to accommodate the better display and power and stuff like that. But as I said, the battery did not suffer from this, so that's really good. Reasons to buy. If you're on an iPad 1, this is probably going to be a very solid upgrade for you, considering the massive performance increase as well as the retina display. And if you are into the 4G LTE networking capabilities, you can't go wrong with that. Um, so that's going to be good. Now, if you're on an iPad 2, 
the retina display is enough for me to upgrade. I always thought the display, the colors were very nice, but the resolution compared to an iPhone 4, you would look at it and you would see every single pixel that made up that display. The text was nice, but it was not incredibly sharp. So this should be a really nice upgrade for anybody. And it is by far still, and it always has been, the best tablet on the market. And it runs iOS with, I think they said, 585,000 applications. I don't know about you, but I cannot quite wrap my head around that. That's a lot of applications with over 200,000 specifically designed for the iPad 3, or the iPad in, in general and its resolution. Uh, so we've got a really, really high quality product here. They are keeping the same prices. It's available in black and white. You can also still buy an iPad 2 in a 16 gigabyte capacity, Wi-Fi or Wi-Fi and 3G for $100 off the prices before. So that should open up the product to uh, a lot of people that maybe don't want to spend the money to get what could be unnecessary features in the iPad 3. So here's the pre-order site, you know, black or white, and then you pick your capacity. It is on AT&T's network as well as Verizon. So you can pick uh, those options here for an extra $130 or so. Uh, and that choice is up to you. They even uh, put this here so you can see how much data and how much it's going to cost you from which carrier. Apple also released uh, a bunch of new applications yesterday. iPhoto for iOS devices, the iPhone 4, the iPhone 4S, and the iPad 3. I do not know if it's available on the iPad 2, uh, so that may be worth looking into. But it is some incredible video or photo editing software. I watched the keynote last night. I heard about it. I read about it online. I thought, okay, well, that's kind of cool. Better organization and some basic editing. I was very wrong. The editing that is now going to be possible on just an iPad with the powerhouse graphics that the iPad 3 or the new iPad will have um, on its release date, it's, an, it's amazing. It really is amazing. I encourage you to go watch the keynote. It's 85 minutes, and uh, it was definitely the best 85 minutes of my day in front of a computer yesterday. Um, really interesting, very, very, very advanced, and I'm really looking forward to that. It's $5. It's not expensive at all for the kind of editing that you're going to be able to do on a iPhone uh, 4, 4S, and then, of course, the iPad 3. They also updated all of the iWork graphics yesterday for um, the Retina display. They did some changes with that. There's a new camera app on the iPad. I do not actually have an iPad right now. I sold my two and I did pre-order the three. It'll be here on Friday, March 16th. Of course, that's the day I leave for California for a week, but it will be here when I get back, I hope. We also saw the public release of iOS 5.1 yesterday, which brings a couple new and nice features to the iPhone in particular. I'm gonna talk about that. Uh, one of the big notable differences, um, with iOS 5, there was the option to double tap your home button and then there was a shortcut to the camera app. Now you don't actually have to do that in anymore. Anytime you hit the home button or the power button on your iPhone 4S and 4 as well, uh, you automatically have on the right hand side a little slider that you slide up to get to your camera. So it's no longer necessary to double tap the home button. Um, quite honestly, that was really annoying. It seemed to take more time and I would much rather have it as they have done. Uh, right on the lock screen. So if you want to see that, I'm sure there's some images online. They also updated the network indicator for AT&T iPhone 4S's to display and let you know when you're on HSPA plus networks. If you're on HSPA, it'll just say 3G up next to AT&T in the top left of the screen. If you're on an HSPA plus network, which is kind of mini 4G, it's 3.5G, it's not 4G LTE uh, by any means, but it will now say 4G to let you know that you're on an HSPA plus network, which has better capabilities um, in terms of speed than HSPA. So those are the big notable differences in iOS 5.1 that I have found so far. It may be a little bit quicker and they seem to have fixed a lot of the bugs in the Photos app. At least I cross my fingers when I say that. It no longer takes me 10 seconds to delete a photo or actually open the app. So those are definitely some welcome changes. Jumping back over to the iPad, I am gonna talk about the release date. It is available pre-order right now I do not know if the dates are still, um, if they're still saying that they deliver on the 16th. Looks like they are still saying that. So if you're interested in buying one, I highly recommend you pre-order it. It'll probably ship a couple days ahead of time and it really should be on your doorstep availability day, the day that it launches publicly on Friday, March 16th, actually a week from tomorrow, likely when you're watching this video. Uh, of course, you can also go in a store and wait in lines and try to buy one there. Unfortunately, you cannot do store pickup because a lot of people would do that and they would rather you just come in and buy it to the store. Limit two per customer, same as the iPad 2. So that will be available next Friday. As I said, I pre-ordered mine online. You'll see the configuration. I will not have an unboxing video up. I apologize for that. I'll try to do a review, get my hands on an iPad 2, and maybe do some sort of a a review and comparison there, but I am very excited for the product, especially with its beautiful screen, great cameras, um, LTE isn't gonna affect me, and the graphics power definitely will. 
So that's the iPad 3. I did want to make this video. Um, I kind of said what I wasn't going to do and run through all the features, but I kind of did put in my two cents if that means anything to anyone. So it's the end of the video. Leave me some comments below. What do you think? Did Apple do a good job? Are you disappointed? Um, I don't think there's any reason to be disappointed, except for the fact that we didn't get Siri. What's up with that? They gave us voice dictation so we can go into mail or notes and actually talk and it will transcribe that vocal input that we give it to text, but we can't press and hold the home button and ask it what the weather is. And I think they did this because right now Siri is, let's be honest, iPhone users, very unstable. It is. About 25% of the time you press and hold the button, you ask it something, it takes 10 seconds and then it comes back and says it can't connect to the network. I think Apple servers are constantly being overloaded with requests for, for Siri. So hopefully if they get another data center up or figure out how to optimize this a little bit better, we will see Siri in possibly iOS 6 on the iPad 3. It will be shipping with iOS 5. So iOS 6 in October will hopefully bring that Siri over to the iPad and maybe even in Mac OS 10 for God knows what, um, which would be OS Mountain Lion in the summer. So I have to wait for that, and that's really the only disappointing thing. But again, leave me those comments below. Are you going to get one? What configuration are you going to get? What do you think, and do you like it? Those are the big questions. That's going to be it for this video. Please check out our website, techinform.us. Follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash James R. Schultz. And I will talk to you guys at least once next week before I head out west for a week. Again, thanks for watching. Subscribe, and I'll talk to you in a later date.